Hi guys, you're so welcome back to this channel or if it's your first time here, you're very welcome. Um, on this channel, Narc Khan, we believe in educating ourselves in relation to the narcissistic personality disorder in order to heal well and to avoid this personality type going forward. Today, guys, I've got a really good one for you. So buckle up, it's going to get bumpy. The information in this video, I should have done this video a long time ago, in relation to when the narcissist knows you know that they're a narcissist, when you know their game, when you know who they are and they know you know who they are. This is a tricky and a dangerous point that you can reach with a narcissist and I'm going to get to what happens with that at the end of the video. In order to explain it fully, I'll start at the beginning. So let's get into it. I also have my cross on today because I know they don't like this getting exposed. So guys, when you are in the relationship with the narcissist and when it's starting off and you have been love bombed the hell around the world, the narcissist is always checking. They're always checking their level of control over you. They're always checking that you're not onto them and that you don't know what their game is. Because guys, always and in every situation, a narcissist has picked you not only for the supply, the emotional supply that you give, they're onto something else as well. They're after something. They're after your character traits. They're after your money. They're after your job. They're after your family. They're after your friends. They're after your house or they're after a combination of these things. And they do not want you to know that because if you know that, obviously, it's not going to go well for them. So they're always checking. They're always, you know, after the love bomb, they'll pull back a bit to see how much it affects you if they pull back a bit and to see how much you will come towards them. And this check, this control check, I call it, quality control check, um, lets them know how far you're hooked and how far, the way I would see it is, the narcissist creates a psychotic bubble with their victim or target in it. And in that bubble, there are layers and layers and layers of control, like the rings on a tree trunk, you know, that, that people can often um, tell how old a tree is. It's one layer after the other after the other. So the narcissist gets you in this bubble with them and then builds layers of control around you to get you into the center of the bubble where they have you totally under control. And this is a process. It's a process in the love bombing stage and it's a process that continues with the manipulations that they use, such as triangulation, gaslighting, isolation, etc. And with each manipulation that works and they have to check that it works after the manipulation is used upon you, each time they get you closer to the center of their total control. And this is important because when you're in the illusion and under their control and actually believing in them, there is no escape from that toxic psychotic bubble. So guys, as the relationship progresses, they will continue to make sure if you start to make your way out of the center of the control bubble, they will make sure to push you firmly back in. Now, if it's taking too much of their time and too much of their effort and you're breaking through too many layers of their control to get to the edge of the bubble to finally break through and actually see the bubble that you're in and see who they are, see behind the mask, they will begin to search ardently for new supply. And this is, I suppose, more relevant to the in to the intimate relationship with the narcissist, but it also applies to other familial, etc. relationships. 
This can go on for years. You, you coming out of the center of the bubble, getting nearer the edge, then the narcissist pushing you back in. And the way they push you back in is by denial, blame shifting, love bombing, telling, telling you future faking and isolation and a reward punishment type of system. There comes a point though, when you travel to the edge of the bubble and you reach out and you get the education or someone gives you a hand and pulls you to the outside of it. Now you're still mesmerized by the narcissist and the relationship with them and you still haven't figured it out. But you're getting the education, you're getting support from family and friends. You've been abused for so many years that you're absolutely fed up, that you're beginning to see the light. The scales are beginning to drop from your eyes. The narcissist may have given you a series of mini discards, which can also pull you back into the bubble. It doesn't necessarily throw you out of the nest, so to speak, because it's another form of manipulation in you thinking that you're not good enough and trying your best to get into the narcissist's good books because you're absolutely addicted to this narcissist and the regulation of your hormones by them. So guys, at this stage, you are aware that there is something very, very wrong. And you may have been aware from the very first day you met the narcissist that there was possibly something wrong with this person, but you overlooked it because of the things they were offering to you to buy into the relationship. Guys, at this stage, you have an awareness. It depends on whether you have reached the stage of acceptance that this person is who they are, where you're not still fighting yourself and fighting the memories that the narcissist has laid down in the relationship that have produced what we call cognitive dissonance in you, where even though you know the facts and you know that you've been abused, the good times colour and kind of romanticise the whole experience and you're still confused as to what actually to believe, to believe that this person is an abuser or to believe that they love you and you want to believe they love you. So it's a it's a process getting to the acceptance stage. OK, so getting to the subject of the video, what happens when the narcissist knows you know? The reason I've explained the process is the narcissist is invested in keeping you for as long as possible, for as long as you pour out the supply and all the residual benefits, perhaps, that the narcissist is enjoying or the connections that you have in the world, etc., etc. The narcissist has invested in you, so he or she wants to get the best value out of their investment. They want to capitalise on you, their commodity. They believe that they have total control over you and own you. But they're not stupid enough to not be aware that at some stage, stupid as they see us, we may cop on or someone may tell us because we're probably too stupid to work that out for ourselves. This is honestly the way they see us, guys. So we're getting to the stage where you have fully accepted that this person is a narcissist and has in no way got your best interests at heart. Maybe you have been discarded. Maybe you have left the narcissist. But there comes a point where you meet the narcissist and you know who they are and they've taken their mask off to you and you've seen it. You've seen them 
sit there or stand there and stare at you like you're a total stranger, like they've never met you before. They have morphed into the next character that they're going to play for the next scenario or stage they're going to get on in life. So at this point, there is one of two ways you can go. You can tell the narcissist that you know who they are. Or you can decide not to and fluff the situation and fluff it out and leave them with the impression that you are still no wiser as to what's going on. And I will do another video on should you let the narcissist know that you know who they are? I'll follow up with that because it's there's a few different aspects to that. So you have met the narcissist and you look into those dark eyes and you tell them that you know who they are. Guys, at this point, the narcissist is still in the belief that they know that you're onto them. They know that you're onto their game and they will stare you right back and say, yeah. They may give you that smirk, the grin. They may stare at you straight and say, so what? And this, this will nearly drive you crazy because it's the total opposite of everything they have pretended to be. And this is what I, I suppose people term as the mask dropping finally and totally. You see the level of the lack of care for you. In fact, you see unveiled hatred and total lack of empathy. So you're looking at this the penny is finally dropping down to the very pits of your soul that you actually have to, are faced with the truth. You're faced with the diabolicalness of the situation. The narcissist will still check you to see at this stage, even though you know who they are and even though you've told them you know who they are, they will still see how hooked you are. Because remember, the layers of control that they wrapped around you in that toxic bubble are very hard to break through so that they don't pull you back in. You've escaped, but you've escaped with what I would call the threads of a spider web still attached to you. And if you if you understand that you're in the spider's web and you understand that it's a spider that has you in their web, if you still have these threads attached, you still have some work to do. And the spider, being the narcissist, is very aware of how much they wrapped you up in that web or in that bubble of control. So if they think there is any currency left in you, and that you can still be manipulated, even though you know who they are and, and they know you know who they are. They will continue to manipulate you at this stage in a new, on a new level. So they'll more or less let it sink in that they're a game player and that they were playing, you know, a game because they wanted something from you. And you're aware of that. They may leave that lie for a while and wait and see how much, how much more you will engage with them, even though you know. And guys, I know a lot of us on our healing journey, even though you get to a certain stage on the journey and you will believe you're healed to a certain extent, if you re-engage with the narcissist, you're in a very vulnerable position because they can pull you back months and sometimes years back into a type of relationship with them 
and they work on breaking your newfound beliefs about the fact that even the narcissistic personality disorder exists, break down your beliefs about narcissism. They can turn it on you and tell you that you're the narcissist, that you have it all wrong. They can get you to open up about why you think that they're this bad person. And they can even come halfway towards you and say, well, I know that's what I was trying to do. And I really say, do want your house or whatever, but I love you and I want to be with you in it. So what they'll do is they'll gas, try and gaslight you out of it. If they feel that there is any, anything left in you of your addiction to the narcissist. So this is one you may not have heard before. And this is, it's the kind of the, the nth degree of sucking your supply out of you. The last manipulation that they can pull on you to see if you're worth holding on to or if you can be pulled right back into the psychotic bubble with them. If there are still strands of the spider web attached to you, I hope this doesn't sound too far out. I'm just trying to explain how, how kind of in, incestuous the relationship with a narcissist can be in that when you think you're out, you may not be out. You have to really, really believe not believe in the mask and really believe in your own recovery to not get pulled back in. The narcissist can pick up on a tiny bit of you still being addicted to them or a tiny bit of movement that they can manipulate within you to get you back, even at that stage. So if the situation is different, guys, and you are totally healed and you confront the narcissist with knowing who they are and you are going supernova as some of the channels call it and actually calling them out for who they are you can see the devil within them you can see their evilness you can see behind the mask and you want nothing whatsoever to do with them and you're on the road to exposing them that's when it gets extremely dangerous with a narcissist particularly if they're high on the psychopathy uh, level, if they are verging towards a psychopath or a sociopath, or if they're highly malignant, or if they have a lot of control over your situation and your life in general. So this is a stage, this is the, the I would say, most dangerous stage with a narcissist and a vicious smear campaign can and will follow you threatening to expose a narcissist and you fronting up to the narcissist and telling them who they are. Remember guys, narcissism and the narcissistic personality disorder and the narcissistic mask that's held up to the world is specifically there for them to avoid the shame of discovery or exposure and for them to avoid looking in the mirror that you hold up to them when you tell them, I know who you are. So what will be revealed when you do that will be the most pers personification of evil that you will perhaps ever see in your life. Let's continue this in the next video in relation to what happens if you don't tell the narcissist you know when you know, and what happens if you do tell the narcissist you know that, you, that they are a narcissist. Be careful at this stage, guys. Check out the next video. I'll make it as soon as I possibly can. But it is, I would say, the most dangerous stage of the narcissistic abuse cycle. Take great care of yourselves and I will see you again very soon. Please look after yourselves. Heal well, prosper and have a great day.